General Services Administration has resources for both the Biden and Trump transition organizations. Both teams can start using office space, computers, and technology services the government pays for. David Marchik is director of the Center for Presidential Transition at the Partnership for Public Service. David, welcome back. It's good to see you again. What's happening now or what should be happening now if these organizations are hitting their marks in the presidential transition process? Thanks for having me, Francis. It's, it's really crunch time for transition planning. And there are three main constituencies. There's the Trump White House, which is preparing for a second term and preparing if they don't win a second term. There are the career officials around the government agencies who are preparing for either eventuality. And the Biden team is gearing up to be ready on day one should they win. With each of those stakeholders, in, in your expert view, where should they be now? I'm particularly interested in what the agency people should be doing to work with both of those outside organizations to get them up to speed on what's happening. Uh, the agencies are actually doing a fantastic job led by the OMB and the GSA. They're working hard. The Pentagon alone has 30 people working almost full time on transition planning. What they're doing right now is getting briefing materials ready for the incoming team should Biden win. They're preparing succession plans, and they're also preparing a second term agenda should Trump be reelected. So the agencies, they're working hard. The career officials take this very seriously. They're operating to implement the Presidential Transition Act, and I feel very good about where they are today. That Presidential Transition Act, I think, is, is an interesting codification of um, something that has been evolving over time. I remember in the first transition I covered in this space was the 2008 transition of President Bush to President Obama. And I remember Senator McCain very heavily criticizing Senator Obama on the campaign trail um, in June of that year for starting to prepare his transition team. In hindsight, that's too late, isn't it? If, if someone's thinking about these things in June and, and putting their, their pieces together in September, that's, that's not good, is it? It's, it's way too late. We started talking to the Trump White House and also to around 10 Democratic campaigns in January. And our message was to the Democratic campaigns, for example, if you're still standing in March, that's when you need to start go, get, getting your transition plan going. And that's exactly what the Biden team did. They're very organized. They have a very all-star team of people around them. They unveiled their board of governors last week. And at the head of it is a fellow named Ted Kaufman, who not only has known the candidate for 40 plus years, but when he was in the Senate, he actually wrote a law amending the Presidential Transition Act. So they're taking it very seriously. They have a good team and they're focused on being ready for day one. What does a successful transition and a successful transition organization look like in the case of a president who's reelected, let's say President Trump's reelected, I think there's an assumption in the general public that there's no transition and things just continue apace. And you and others have educated me over time. That's not the case at all. It's actually a huge transition. And let me just talk about two aspects of it. On personnel, the data shows that almost half of the top people in the second term leave within six months of the president's inauguration. And some would say, including Josh Bolton, who was chief of staff for President Bush, that's not enough. You need more change. You need fresh eyes, fresh legs, fresh perspective, because a second term is inherently more difficult than a first term. All of the easy policy issues have already been implemented. The Congress is pretty much much more hostile. And the president is lame duck the first day after the election. So they have a fellow named Chris Liddell at the White House, who's the deputy chief of staff. He's an expert on transition planning. He was the head of the Romney transition team, and he's focused on both policy and personnel should Trump be reelected. What happens in the case of that reelection? What, what's the effective thing that you would like to see Chris do the day after the election if it, or the day that we know that President Trump will be reelected if that turns out to be the case? Well, the biggest challenge for the Trump team will be personnel. Can they attract the best people in the government. There's been you know, just a huge amount of turnover in the Trump administration, much more than normal. They have a large number of acting positions. And whether 
you support Trump or you don't support Trump, you want him to have the best team around him should he be reelected. And so that will be the most important priority if they're reelected, is getting good people, competent people, pragmatic people to come into government, to staff the government. We're obviously in a critical time for the government. We're in a pandemic and delivery of healthcare, delivery of a vaccine, helping people that are out of jobs, out of work and in need. There's never been a more important time in recent history where the government really has an impact on people's day-to-day -day lives. And that's why you need good people. David Marchik, thanks very much as always. Thanks for having me.